And a good afternoon from Hong Kong. Uh, occasionally some sun has been popping out here. All right, today, the new air pumps, these little mini air pumps that I've been talking about, they have arrived. Um, this one here is three liters per minute of air. Uh, what's nice about this one is air goes in this side one and then the air comes out, which is, makes it convenient for the, the setup that I have. Now these little 1.8 liters per minute, um, I've, we've been kind of been playing with them. Now I've got it, this is, I've just got some power coming off the helm. Um, I've got a circuit here, uh, it's fused at 10 amps, but that sh should be not a problem. So I put in a switch coming from the helm. It comes up here, I've got the two. Um, so as you can see, this is, sucks the air and, uh, and goes out. Um, this one goes, uh, the smaller one, seems to go at a higher RPM than this one. Well, I can tell the size of the motors. But anyway, it's um, just that small one is, is making that 1.8 uh, liters of air into this little container, making lots and lots of bubbles. And then off of this one, I've just got a T. I've got a T down here. And that's what's actually doing the air pump. That's feeding the nutrients to it. And then the other line is just going down. It's bubbling on this. One of our first little experiments with hydroponics. So, anyway, that's what these are. Them, they're here. I've got uh, six of each. I bought six of each. So, so I'm I'm doing good. So I've got a vast array of different air stones in that. But um, I've made quite a few changes too um, to even um, the whole system now. As you can see, I've, I've got it in. I've got, um, I don't have the conduit in. I've just got the wire because I haven't run that up yet. But again, um, air pump on and off, water pump on and off. So, but um, what I've done is I've, I've made a few changes. I'll let the pump catch up. Um, there we go. Um, There we go. There we go. Sometimes it'll it'll suck air, and it, I had a problem with that before. And but anyway, uh, what I've done is um, I've taken I've got this black hose that that you know gets me to the center. But what I'm what I'm doing is I, I've cut small pieces and I've got them just into this hose, so the little orifice doesn't close up. So, and it kind of aim it, but this is what I've been kind of playing with on that. And I'll shut this off here, and I'll be able to uh, let you guys see. Ugh. Oh, I see. There we go. So, take these out, and it's just as easy as that to disconnect them. All right, so now on the inside, on the inside, I've got my air stone. And so the air stone is pumping over there. That's taking the most of it. I tried one of uh, putting in a smaller one here and not seeing if that would, you know, really do anything. But, you know, a little bit of air comes through. But see, the, the problem that I had when I was first testing if I have this uh, flat stone too close to my pump, it starts sucking air and it, it starts belching and burping. And, and I didn't like that. I see I've got to cut a cable tie here. Um, but other than that, it's this is in and the air pump is inside this. The air pump is inside it and I mean it's, it's really, really quiet. The water pump is, is louder than the air pump. So, but that's in, in how, how, I've, how I've set it up um, with these, because I, I still have to do this one yet. But as you can see, the air pump is, is going to be in the front of the control. So here's my con control connections. But right in here, um, see I've got one of these cable ties. And what I'm doing is this will sit in here and I just cable tie it in. 
and it's more than ample, but this is aerating this one right now. I just got a temporary until I hook this up. But that will sit in there, but now remember this, this side sucks in air. So even though this is a watertight um, box, what I'm doing, what I've done is I drilled a hole straight below it. So I've drilled a hole, it's a quarter inch hole, straight below it, and I've run the hose so it just sticks out a little bit. So I'm sucking in air from the outside and then ambient temperature and I'm pushing it inside. So it, with the falling water that's in there, the, the fresh air that's coming in, uh, it, it should make the plants happy as long as I get um, a good NPK. But I don't know, I gotta get on my belly here. I don't know if you can see that. This right there is where the air sucks in. Should I have some kind of a filter system or something? I, I figured it's it's down, I don't know, about 12 mil. So any water that would come, it shouldn't suck up any water. And anyway, and then I'll have the conduit coming in. But then this will be totally solid for the electronics. So electronics will always be safe um, from any elements. And, that, and then it just goes through. And again, that's the... Um, uh, fish tank or aquarium um, silicone that's around that hole. I may put some more silica flex around this, but but other than that, it's. I mean, I'm, I'm making a bunch of air um, to go into it. It's dead silent, and that and it should be go. So right now, um, I'm going to check the pH on this um, and put some nutrients in it, and I think I'm going to put four tomato plants in there. Um, then I've got to go and I don't think I'm going to switch these. I'm just going to let these sit in here um, and I'll handle it with these in there. Maybe I can move it over a little bit, um, do do something, because I just got to drill that hole and get a little aquarium silicone around the back. But everything else on the inside is set up. So, but these little pumps are great. You know, and they were cheap as chips. I think, um, I think the the three liter, the three liter per minute was like four U.S. dollars, and the 1.8 was like two dollars and sixty cents U.S. or something. But I mean, they they run cool. This has been running for several hours now, and I don't know. It's about 30 degrees here right now. It's Celsius anyway. So, and it's, it's not hot. The, the voltage rating is from uh, 21 or 22 volts DC up to 30 volts um, DC. So as I charge my batteries and um, the charge controller from the solar panels gets my battery bank up to 29.8, I'm still within that range. I'm, I'm not going to damage the pumps. Um, but in the event that I do, I've, I've got, you know, three more, um, because I'm going to have one for this one, one for that one, and I don't think I'm going to do the 1.8. I think I'm going to back for this is definitely going to need the three liter per minute in that reservoir tank. So it's, they're, they're coming together and I'm going to be putting, putting tomatoes in this, um, today. Uh, and then again, there's my clean out. So there are little connectors. I have to hook that up so we don't lose that off the side of the boat. But anyway, this the system has air. It has the pump. I'm going to put in my nutrients. I'm going to make sure the pH is good um, before I put in the nutrients. And that, and again, I'm just using 20-20-20 because that's what's readily available. I've searched and searched and searched. You cannot just buy a bag of Epsom salt in Hong Kong. Uh, I've talked to other people that have uh, even joint pains and stuff that they would usually wrap uh, Epsom salt type rag around their knees to take the heat out and stuff. But anyway, they ship it in from like Australia or New Zealand, it's Epsom salt. So it's just hard to find anything here even though everything is made nearby. So we make do with what we got. But anyway, it's it's in. 
The air pump is working and the controls, as you can see, are there. And I'll finish up with this one. Now we're doing laundry here. Um, so we'll finish up with this one today, get the pump in there, and now it's just a flip of a switch downstairs and it's on. And we'll just go. So now it is up to the tomato plants to grow. So and we'll see what happens with that. All right, guys, be good, be safe, and always be well. Bye-bye. All right, well, good evening from Hong Kong. I figured it's, it's time to close out on my production of my self-contained tomato hydroponic system. All right, as you can see, I've got the port side is done now I've it's all I've all left that I've just got to attach the, the base yet wash it off but anyway I guess things will get changed but my focus on this video my focus on this video is it's self-contained now I just got the one power line going in to my control box tomato plants are getting fed the nutrient solution has water and we come over starboard side these are all suckers these are suckers that I've just clipped and from those plants um, <laughs> that are not doing so good but anyway I've changed all the nutrient solution in both of them today um, air stones been just pumping all day, all day, nonstop. Um, they're, they're just getting fed. Uh, these have been in here probably about two hours and I'm just letting it run, letting the nutrient solution get into the expanded clay pellets and that, oh, excuse me, I've been drinking beer. Um, I've, I've gone and I've made a support here. Um, so, like, this one's already needed it. Um, this has been supported. Um, when this grows up, when this grows up, we got May decided to take a swim. So, so she says the water's cold, and then the little life jacket makes it tolerable to jump in. Plus, she's having fun. That's the thing. All right, anyway. Um, I'm just using scrap right now because now I'm gonna going to get a... Almost like one of those movable, like you go to a hotel and the valet or whatever they have that thing that has they put all your jackets and stuff like that, hanging clothes. Well, anyway, that's what it's going to come up from here. It's going to come up to the top of the bimini here and go across. And I'm just going to have the string system that's just going to hold it. So, um, this is going to work for now. But the system is in, and the tomatoes can now grow, and 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 that's that's what I want. Um, I've had to use pH down. Um, I'm just using uh, pH down. I got to get some more. Um, using pH down for um, for the water because I'm using shore water in that. So I kind of cleaned it out. pH down to uh, it's. Um, uh, 6.2 6 is what it is in both of them and um, I'm using 20 20 20 because that's what, what is readily available to me I'm unable to get Epsom salt or anything else just what's in in that box um, that's that's it that is that's what I'm gonna have to work with so hopefully these tomato plants will accept the 20 20 20 and something go good you know i went and i found um at there's this one place uh, in Mungkok here that actually has that miracle grow tomato um but i've i've looked at that stuff that that mhp gardener um has put on about that using that tomato miracle grow um as as the base for it um wasn't as good but I don't know. I don't know what I should do because I've got that or I've got this 20-20-20. And I would love your guys' input in that. Um, what I should do. Now, this one that has the tomato that's growing, 
this one, the, the tomato is growing. Uh, it, it seems to be the, the leaves are getting darker again. This one up on the top, I've got good growth. Um, these leaves are uh, almost look like there's too much nitrogen or not enough nitrogen, but that's when I first planted it. But it could be from when I first had it in just those cups, you know, nothing was bubbling or anything. That one's kind of coming back to life, got new growth. Um, this one, I've got new growth here, um, but these leaves look kind of weird. So, but now again, it's been about a week for these tomatoes. And, uh, and now today is Wednesday. I have no idea what um, number of the month it is right now. I'm going to say something in the 20s. <laughs> of, and, uh, but I know it's May. I know it's May because uh, Chinese calendar, uh, this would fall in. It's Buddha's birthday. It was on Monday. So I'm going to say it's, it's May in the 20s. But it, they're on and running. Um, so they're running, and these are the suckers that are going to grow. So after that, now I can go and focus on this one in the back, get shading to it, and then I can say hydroponic system is a go. Houston, hydroponics are a go. So that's what's happening. Um, we got so much rain over this last week. Um, May's uh, peanut plants just love the moisture. Um, they've like doubled in size. Our little strawberries, we had to clip off the strawberries on it. But I just want to start getting runners. Want to get start runners for that, but I, I doubt it's going to be this season. Um, her pineapple, you can see that's a pineapple plant down there. Pineapple's grown. But again, that's all in soil. Let's not talk about soil. Let's talk hydroponically. So that's what's going on. The hydroponic systems, even though we've had all this rain, a lot has gone into the tanks. So I would love your guys' feedback um, on what I can do to cover these. Now it's about um, 7 inch by um, just over a half inch, say like 9 sixteenths height and seven inches what can i do to prevent because i've I found that the issue is water is kind of cascading down but when the wind blows it kind of the waterfall goes and we get i probably get 10 gallons of water go into that thing on you know the big heavy black rainstorms and stuff so and that, now that's going to happen over on this side as well. So, and now it costs um, 12 Hong Kong dollars to treat uh, basically six gallons. And at 12 Hong Kong, so it's, uh, so just under two dollars, just under two dollars for like just say five gallons. So two dollars per, so it's like six dollars. A US every time I change the nutrients plus the pH down because I'm using uh, tap water and right now I have not installed my how to capture rainwater you know from this I want to capture it in 55 gallon drums but I got to get some kind of a cap system because it just you can you can see that so how it just kind of goes in but anyway, tomatoes are growing on the top deck of the Bigfoot. All right, guys, I got to pick up my tools and drink some beer and eat some food. So be good, be safe, and always be well. Bye-bye.